We've got to take a deep breath and put this into perspective. From roughly the election through a week ago Friday, the S&P 500 was up about 40%. Yeah. And everyone was whining that the biggest correction we had over that period of time was 3% back in August. And now we get a 4% correction last week. And the sky is falling. The, the thing that shocked me, Yuri and Timmer put out a note over the weekend. I, I hadn't done the math on this, but he said the market, S&P 500, was up 59% in the last two years, since February of 2016, right, that, without a 5% pullback. Right. That is stunning. It is stunning. And, and you look at what happened Friday. I think the read-through is a positive one, if you understand what happened. The jobs numbers were terrific. Yep in conjunction with the claims data and the ADP numbers. The wage inflation number went up to a 2.9% year-over-year level. We think that's going to continue to grind up towards four over the next year or so. That's all good, but then the read-through is, well, what, what, what's Powell and the Fed going to do come March 21st? That puts March in play, and then everyone starts to freak out. So we were annualizing, like an 80% annualized gain, if you <laughs> right. can go, go back one on week path. ago. So wildly overbought bought the first four weeks of the year, we worry about nothing but the stronger growth outlook. Then for one week, we worry about nothing but the higher yield outlook. You know, so the truth is that we have to deal with both. I mean, the U.S. is going to need more money, real money, to finance government expenditures this year. Uh, the Fed is going to shrink its bond portfolio by $400 billion. Uh, we also have a somewhat larger budget deficit on tax cuts, and we require savings flows. Take a look at what the U.S. dollar has done you know, we have not attracted foreign savings flows, so the U.S. dollar uh, is showing some of the weakness and the signs that the bond market needs is, a higher yield. Is the U.S. Yield. dollar weak because of that, or is the U.S. dollar weak because growth in Europe and in Asia is just a little better than anybody had dented? The, these are all the things that are competing for savings flows around the world, competing for capital flows. Uh, and what you saw up until last week, for example, was foreign central bank participation uh, in the U.S. Treasury market has not been wonderful at higher yields. Hedging costs are somewhat higher, so foreign investors are requiring to take some U.S. dollar risk, uh, some exchange rate risk, as well as, uh, as rate risk right now. But we do, when we find that cross-market volatility comes down, when we see that the bond market has reached its new level, you know, we're going to look back and say, well, wait does a this, second, good news is good news. Does this make you change your mind about fixed income? Would you change your allocations for clients into fixed income, into credit or debt at this point? It's getting more attractive. Now, these are not high yields. I mean, but new when you take new a dollars look, today, new dollars today, where would they go? So I think in the U.S. we rank higher already. So the short end of the yield curve is where we've been because we're liking that a lot better as an alternative to cash. But we could consider going further out the yield curve. Yeah, especially uh, and products with like what yields do the last the last week yes. or so, you, you are no longer seeing the, the inversion. Now, again, the stronger growth news fundamentally leads us to a higher yield view. And we've got to get come to grips with that, but the, we are getting more attractive uh, in credit products in the United States, higher quality credit products. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.